Hey there, everybody. Julian Schutze here from Blood and Iron Martial Arts. I recently had the opportunity to teach at Shield Knock, which is a shield-based HEMA event. The event itself consisted of a lot of miscellaneous events, lots of different styles of shields, instructors, and tons of free sparring. But additionally, it had a lot of interesting scenarios that people would go through. I managed to catch a ton of footage throughout the entire event, and to put it simply, there's too much for just one video. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking lots of the little cool ideas that happen throughout the event, put them as their own little videos, and then release them throughout the week for all of you to watch. Then I'm going to be putting forward my official review of the event at the end of the week. One of the first interesting scenarios was the effects of a sharp sword on a regular buckler. Now the event itself was quite noisy since it was shield based, so there's a lot of noise in the background which might make it a little difficult for you to hear what the presenters are saying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually go through all the closed captions and subtitles and make sure they are completely accurate. So if you're having a hard time understanding what they're saying, turn those on and hopefully that'll help out. So what everyone's going to get the opportunity to feel is what it feels like to have a sharp sword hit a buckler. And it's going to behave, you're going to notice a couple of things that are going to behave a lot differently. So I go ahead and stick it. Now push my sword around. See how much control you have over that sword? Push it back Try to move my sword. It's tons of control. My partners are now going to cut into it. We lost 3,000 degrees. The console, that's the big beam out of the house. Why is it down? 3,000 degrees. Huge, huge, huge difference. Why is it down? Shuffle over to someone else. That's so funny. That's such a good one. What are you doing? It's just moving around, right? Now, if we keep, like, uh, I don't know. Just keep the shit out. It's a hurt to me, right? I don't know if we have the barriers that we can close. So all those cuts, all those cuts which try to roll off and get those, and look at how easily he can feel. It's like, sorry, I'm going to do that. He can feel it. So those things, a lot of the cuts to things, like the nonsense that we see in sort of author, you hit the shield and you roll off and hit the guy, oh, I got you. That wouldn't happen at all. I'm going to stick out the the thrust. That's a light, I'm barely sticking that. Huh. Imagine someone really driving in the back for us and hitting that box. So I'm going to cut you. Cheese, yeah, that's no fun. This is, these are just light little cuts, right? So imagine how much meat you would see a light with someone really cutting it off. Yeah. You know, I'll give you one more cut. I'm sure about just a few things are going to be What can I use? How much you want to do that? And it obviously plays a little more space. It's in that steel. So this is actually in the steel. He's still able, with the metal tie off, to move it. Now I'm going to cut. No break on the These tests were super interesting. Something to keep in mind though is that it's not a revolutionary game changer. It's not like when they throw a strike into your buckler that then they're immediately stuck and then that's it, game over. But it definitely creates an extra element of control that can go your way. And these were still very light shots. If Kyle was throwing some powerful cuts or powerful thrusts, I'd imagine that the degree of control would be even stronger, as it would get even further embedded into the buckler. This is not something that is relatively obvious when using steel or synthetic blunts against another buckler. So as Kyle mentioned before, this is definitely something to keep in mind when someone throws a strike, it hits the buckler, skips off, and then tags you in the leg or the torso. Chances are, it wouldn't do very much.
Now this buckler was made of leather, so obviously the sword sticks into it easier. But he has reported that he has had similar results with a steel buckler as well, so it doesn't make that much of a difference. It's not so much a matter that the buckler acts as a magnet. The main takeaway is that the defender now has additional methods of feeling out as to what their opponent is doing, since their sword is lodged in their buckler. It acts as an extra source of feedback. 